Well, uh, in my country right now, there is, a, there is a lot going on. We've faced some sort of restriction. We've had schools closed, uh, churches closed, and any kind of gatherings closed as well. Funerals have also been uh, limited to a certain number of people. Uh, weddings, any kind of gathering has been postponed to further notice. And then we've had uh, public and private transportation being put on hold until further notice. Uh, we've re before we also had some of the some of the shops closed and only the food shops were operating, but uh, some of the restrictions were lifted. So many other shops are operating right now, and uh, we we are supposed to to use masks if we are outside. So that is the situation right now when it comes to the COVID-19. I personally, I am doing literally most of the stuff. I'm doing them at home. I'm not really going out because uh, the parents are also very strict with the movements because the only way that we can stop the, the virus from spreading is, um, is by staying at home. And uh, the, the, the numbers, the number of cases has been increasing daily uh, but on a very small small account i think right now we have like 122 22 cases and um, the problem is that we have truck drivers who keep coming in every day and going out and bringing in stuff for the country so basically most of the cases that are coming in right now they are from the truck drivers and uh, yeah, we've had the government um, help out to distribute food to certain people, especially in vulnerable communities. This is because many of them are not working right now and many of them survive on the money that they earn on, the, on a daily. So since many of them are not working, you find that some don't have access to food. Some just have to survive on, a, on, a, on one meal a day. So basically that is what is happening right now when it comes to the COVID-19 situation. And then uh, for the climate activism, uh, many things have been put on hold. Uh, the climate activists cannot go out anymore to do the strikes in the streets or in front of the parliament or other government organizations because uh, many of us are far from each other and uh, you know, we as activists, we like listening to guidelines set by by the scientists. And if the only way that we can stop the spread of the virus is by staying at home. So we chose to do that and uh, just carry the activism in a different way. For young people in this period of time, Many of them have been able to express themselves, that is before, when it comes to climate activism. I was speaking the angle of climate activism. Many young people have been uh, expressing themselves through the, the demonstrations and the climate strikes on the streets, but now it's also not so possible. And also many other young people, especially those in primary schools, have been able to get to know about climate change and get some sort of climate education because in the activism uh, I've also been going to some schools and talking to students especially those in primary school about climate change about the environment but that is not possible right now because the schools are closed so that of course has been affected many young young kids and very many young people cannot be able to learn more about climate change and cannot be able to join the activism. Uh, we were running some projects of installation of solar and by now I was hoping that I would have finished with two more schools, uh, the installation of the solar and the stoves. But as I speak right now, none of that has been done specifically because the schools are closed and there is no movement. So I think young people have been um, affected in a way that they cannot express themselves. And you find that many of the people who have been doing climate activism with us, they don't have phones or they cannot access the internet. So it is very hard for them 
to even continue doing climate activism on the digital platforms. So they just have to wait till everything has been, you know, resolved and the situation is back to, you know, to uh, normal and the lockdowns have been lifted for them to be able to start doing the activism again. Well, yes, there are, there are quite a number of ways that uh, young people can help and uh, can do something in this period in regards to taking climate activism on another level. Of course, right now we are at a point whereby getting the climate message out there is really hard because many people are focused on the coronavirus and they, they're just seeking out for updates, they're seeking out for recovery cases. Some are even seeking out to know the death rates if they're increasing or if they are decreasing. So a less focus is being put on climate change. That is why I think young people are so needed right now in taking the climate activism to a different platform. And that is online, you know. And uh, how we do this, we take part in the climate strikes online every Friday where you take a photo with a placard and uh, you share that photo on your social media platforms. And um, there are also webinars that are organized by different Fridays for future uh, groups in various countries. I have personally been part of the webinars and um, I also have a podcast where I do interviews of various activists. So when I do those interviews, I share their their work and their activism on my social media platforms just to keep telling people that climate change has not gone, climate change has not gone on vacation, climate change has not, you know, gone into quarantine. It is here and it, it is affecting people. I would give an example of what is happening in East Africa right now. We are clearly seeing what the the lake is doing to the people the water levels are really rising up and we saw i think 32,000 people displaced in kenya while around 194 people were killed in kenya during this covid 19 crisis and then in uganda it is the same thing happening people are being displaced people are being left with literally nothing because the lake is just submerging everything. Uh, we have Kasese in Uganda. There were uh, terrible, terrible floods and landslides and people's homes are being swept away. People are being swept away. So this, these are the things that you know really need to keep us moving as activists to really show that climate change has not gone on break and that there are people in the most vulnerable communities that are suffering right now. So the best way that the young people can continue with their activism is by taking it online. If you have a phone and you're able to access the internet, then the best way is to reach out on social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and keep demanding for action through the climate strikes, through joining any digital actions that are organized by any climate movements, sometimes polluters out organizers, sometimes Fridays for Future, sometimes the Save Congo Rain Forest team organizes. So you find that there are many digital actions that we as activists can be able to join in order to keep the conversation going and showing the leaders that we are not silent. We just change location and the way we do our activism. Yes, I was saying that the kind of world that I want to see right now, sorry, after the pandemic, may not be the kind of world that the leaders are planning to give us because the coronavirus has exposed so much. It has exposed the vulnerability of many economies, of many governments. It has literally shown that at the end of the day, we are all the same, we are all vulnerable, and the pandemic does not leave out everyone. And it has also showed that the leaders are able to listen to the science, they're able to work collectively and take the action that is needed and take the decisions that can save people's lives. So as an activist, I really hope that the governments would think about a more green recovery than opting for any other kind of recovery. You know, we understand that the economies are, are going into recess right now and 
it worries me as an activist to think about the post pandemic because I just think that the governments are going to try as much as possible to build their economies by bailing out oil and gas companies, by taking um, any kind of actions that would be a, a, a threat to the environment, that would be a threat to the planet. I worry about what the leaders are going to do and the decisions they are going to make just to make quick profits to build their economies. But as an activist, I really want to see uh, a, a recovery that is more sustainable for people in the various communities. I hope to see a world whereby everything is so inclusive and that people are able to have access to basic needs. You know, in this coronavirus, they were telling people that they should stay at home, but you realize that there were so many homeless people, but some of the governments were able to find homes for these people. So it clearly showed that these leaders have the capacity. All they need is the will. So we as activists need to keep speaking up in this period and even after this period so that we do not let the leaders take decisions that are going to harm the planet. Continuous harming of the planet is going to make us more vulnerable to more pandemics that are to come. The only way that we can stop these pandemics and the only way that we can stop being vulnerable to these pandemics and being so prone to them is by protecting our ecosystems, is by protecting our environment and by protecting our planet. So I, as an activist, I really hope that the governments opt for a green recovery for the entire world. Mm -hmm.